progressive fibrosing ILD is a terminology that's used to describe a phenotype of interstitial lung disease um, that doesn't stay stable, but does progressively uh, worsen. Um, so this, this can be with regards to uh, progression of um, pulmonary abnormalities or, or function as assessed by pulmonary function testing. So there's different definitions that are used to define actually what does progressive mean. Um, one definition that is used is a decline of greater than or equal 10 to 10 percent of FBC or forced vital capacity on PFDs. Um, another parameter that can be looked at would be the diffusion capacity or diffusing capacity for carbon dioxide on PFTs, if that's reducing by 15 percent. Or even if um, the reduction in the forced vital capacity, that FBC again on pulmonary function testing is maybe between five to 10%, um, but there's progression of interstitial lung disease on a CT scan, or the patients are noting that they are becoming progressively short of breath. Um, these are all different, uh, different definitions, I guess, of uh, progressive full fibrosing lung disease. And these changes, um, again, between 12 and 24 months that we're looking at uh, these changes as occurring and may use this definition for the progressive fibrosing lung disease. Um, again, it's really this broad overview term that's used to describe um, progressive fibrosing <laughs> lung disease, as the name would suggest. Um, not only is this the idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, but really any interstitial lung disease that is, is showing these features of progression falls under this umbrella term. So any of those interstitial lung diseases um, with an underlying autoimmune disease, for example, or even other interstitial lung diseases that may um, be secondary to exposures, for example, can fall under this umbrella term. So it's an umbrella term describing interstitial lung disease, but then we will separate it out into, um, for example, interstitial lung disease driven by an autoimmune process or interstitial lung disease um, that is potentially idiopathic, uh, falling under that idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis term. Um, it's actually very important to make this distinction as right now, if, if the progressive fibrosing lung disease is caused or underlies an autoimmune disease, we'll use therapies directed at suppressing the immune system. However, in um, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, um, the drugs that are used are antifibrotic agents that are approved. Now, of course, there's uh, this very, there's a couple trials actually undergoing to see if the antifibrotic therapies may be actually important to use in the context of autoimmune disease because it does show this progressive fibrosis and perhaps um, either using antifibrotic agents with the um, agents that suppress the immune system may have significant impacts on overall um, course of disease. Um, again, these studies are still underway um, in their phase three, so it's possible that a combination of the therapies, for example, in autoimmune diseases with ILD, um, it's, it's possible that a combination therapy actually may be the best treatment. But right now we're using immunosuppression uh, therapies for um, those driven by autoimmune disease, whereas it's uh, the idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis is being treated with antifibrotic therapy. We actually don't make a distinction between PILD and, and ILD. It's, uh, is splitting hairs and the bottom line is is that it really doesn't matter from the health plan perspective 